You know, there are so many myths about hell. A lot of them, I don't even know where they get them from. A lot of it is from popular culture, like movies, books and everything. I mean, just even looking on the internet and just trying to just find out what hell is about, the first thing that came up was basically the levels of hell. And apparently there's nine of them. It's called Dante's Inferno and it lists nine levels of hell. We've got limbo, lust, gluttony, greed, anger, heresy, violence, fraud and treachery. I mean, does this sound like hell? A little bit. But what is it all about? That's what this is going to be about. That's what I'm going to do. And if you're new to this channel, well, this is all about busting biblical myths. Those little things that you think, oh, it doesn't make sense. That's what this is about. So click that bell, subscribe, and we can get into it. Let's start with Dante's Inferno. His description is nine levels of hell. It's actually based on, apparently, well not apparently, but interestingly enough, Dante's Inferno is a divine comedy. Sounds a great basis for a comedy. <laughs> Maybe a sitcom. What it does is set up the premise of what hell is going to be like. Let me just go through a couple of these to give you a bit of an idea. Limbo. These are for non-Christians, unbaptized, and it's an inferior form of heaven. Tell you what, if I was to go to hell, I think I would like to go to limbo. To any inferior form of heaven would be fantastic. However, that's not what the Bible teaches. Let's go on. There's lust. Uh, interestingly enough, it mentions Cleopatra and Helen of Troy and Tristan. I'm not too sure who Tristan is, but I find it interesting that they mention, like, say, like, Cleopatra. I'm assuming that Mark Antony, who was with Cleopatra, should be on this list just as much as Cleopatra. Then we've got Gluttony, uh, which is, I guess, not just, I mean, we always see it as food, but it is also talking about gluttony of having things and wanting more and more than we even deserve. And then we have greed. I mean, that's an obvious one. Anger. Anger is an interesting one because even in the Bible, it talks about God hating sin. So anger and hatred are not necessarily, well, they're not necessarily sin. I mean, if it's righteous anger, then it's okay. However, and I think probably, just as a side note, I think God has that one. I think you and I probably miss the boat on um, righteous anger, but anyway. Then we have heresy, violence, fraud, and treachery. Now, treachery is an interesting one as well, because at least some people like Brutus is here. Brutus, if you know the play where Caesar is stabbed to death by his friend, or treacherous friend, Brutus. Brutus is here because of his treachery. However, the problem is, who is Brutus being treacherous against? Is it Caesar? Which, interestingly enough, Caesar is apparently in limbo, so he's not quite decided, and I think that might be Dante more than um, it has anything to do with where Caesar is. There's an interesting one if we go back to anger. Filippo Agenti, I think I've said that right. And this is the interesting part. He is putting that, and you're probably thinking, well, who is he in the scheme of things in history? Well, apparently he's a prominent politician who confiscated Dante's property after his expulsion from Florence. So I think he had a bit more of a gripe there. I mean, sin is many different levels. So how can we be on greed, gluttony and anger and hatred and treachery all at the same time? We can't. This doesn't stack up. What does the Bible say about it? Well, I've got some passages here. Place of torment from Luke 16, 23. In Mark 9, 43, it talks about an unquenchable fire. Mark 9, 48 is where worms do not die. Then we've got Matthew 13, 42, where there is much gnashing of teeth with anguish and regret. 
Then we have Luke 16, 19, 31. There is no return. You can't come back. Matthew 25, 30, a place of outer darkness, being thrown out, not being part of anything anymore and just being alone and desolate and gnashing of teeth and in, in regret of everything you've done. Jesus also compares hell to a place called Gehenna. Now, in his time, Gehenna was a dumping ground just below the walls of Jerusalem where people would just chuck rubbish and everything they didn't want and they would set fire to it to kind of get rid of it and there was lots of worms eating all this rubbish and everything and it was i guess it was trying to get everyone to think about what hell was so jesus was describing this place called gehenna as the final hell now one thing i find interesting is a lot of um, movies, books, and all that. They talk about the devil, Satan, being in hell right now. Satan is free right now, and he's roaming around doing whatever he wants. Although, and I guess I should stress this, whatever he wants that God allows. He is still constrained by God's law, by everything. And he still is able to talk to God and everything. So right now, Satan is not in hell. However, God has prepared a place for him and his angels. And I guess this is where people get confused. They think that hell is somewhere, a place for us, for where we go if we don't follow God's way. But the thing here is, it's not a place that was made for us. It's made for Satan and his angels. So they haven't got a hope. But you and I, we do have a hope. And to be quite honest, we are deserving of hell. But God wants to, to rescue us from hell. That's his whole point. That's the whole point of this book. Is that telling us that God made perfect, we wrecked it. God fixed it, we wrecked it again. Every single time man gets in the way and wrecks it. And that's where Jesus comes along to finally fix it. And it's done. On the cross, it's done. And I guess the thing is, that's the whole point of this book, is God rescuing us from our sin. We deserve hell. That's where we're going. But God says no. No. Come through Jesus and you can have heaven and eternal life with him, with God. And that's everything, really. I mean, these things with Dante's Inferno, I mean, it's a divine comedy. It's all made up. However, it just seems to even be through Christian thought and everything. And it gets mixed up in some myth. That's not what it is. It's got nothing to do with that. It's, it's God rescuing us from hell, not sending us to hell, rescuing us from hell. That is the whole point. And that's everything. Go do something awesome for God and we'll catch you in the next one.